Hi everyone, I'm Cameron Good, live from Sun Valley, Idaho, where I'll be preparing the Green Goddess Dressing's ancestor dish, a green sauce called Verde Sauce. There is a cookbook from England written over 800 years ago in 1190 by Alexander Neckham. Alexander Neckham was an English scholar and scientist who wrote this recipe, which is a recipe for one of the earliest green sauces. <laughs> this English recipe was really the beginning of all green sauces. However, there is a French recipe from Escoffier in the early 20th century called Sauce Verte. Sauce Verte descended from Neckham's green sauce. And the French sauce verte is a teensy bit more similar to the first green goddess dressing, which came around in 1923 in San Francisco. The French sauce verte includes a mixture of herbs, mayonnaise, and salt or anchovies. The original green goddess dressing also utilized a mixture of herbs, mayonnaise, and anchovies. However, the difference between the French sauce verte and the original green sauce from the English is that the English green sauce is solely made of herbs and spices. So here I have Parsley, fresh sage, garlic, pepper, which you can't really see, but it's in there. But one of the most important ingredients to this recipe is the salt. In Neckham's recipe instructions, he writes this Latin phrase, which roughly translates to don't forget the salt. For the past few hundreds of years, the root of the word sauce or salsa comes from the Latin word salsis or salsa, which meant the salty seasonings that made food delicious. Let's get to cooking! Here I have my chopped up parsley, sage, and garlic. And I would assume they would have used a mortal and pestle, however, I don't have that. So I'm gonna use a meat tenderizer um, and this bowl. We are going to blend the herbs together. After they all mesh, I'll mix in the pepper. And of course, you cannot forget the salt. So now, adding my parsley. Unfortunately, I have no idea the measurements for this dish because I guess people in the ancient times didn't want us to know. I don't really know, but I'm just gonna add it kind of as I see fit. Back in the past, I don't think sauce really necessarily had to mean like a liquid. Um, I think it's more of like a seasoning, it's just kind of the root of the word. Okay, so here is the final product. I don't have meat right now to um, put this on, but I figured a piece of bread could be good alongside it. Spread a little bit on here. Okay, let's test her out. Not bad. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a meat connoisseur and I think this would be fantastic on top of some steak. So look, I'm eating more. That's how good it is. Thank you all for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Um, and now I'm going to send it over to Sophia who's gonna talk about the real green goddess dressing. Hey guys, today we're gonna make green goddess salad dressing, the parent dish. This dressing was created by the chef at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, California. He created it for the cast of the green goddess play in 1923 and for the main actor, George Arliss. This recipe was served to the elites and the famous people that stayed at the hotel so it had a high quality sociality. Um, some of the main ingredients that are known to the recipe are a mayonnaise base, as well as herbs like parsley and chives. We are also using tools like a knife, a whisk, a bowl, measuring cups, cutting board, those sorts of things. A 
Okay guys, now that we have everything chopped up, we're gonna add it to the bowl. All right, now we've added all our ingredients and this is what it looks like. We're gonna let it sit for one hour to meld all the ingredients together and then we're gonna enjoy. All right guys, so it's actually been about three hours since I made this just because I got busy and I had class and stuff. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's kind of like brown vomit. Um, yeah, so we're gonna taste it. I'll just put it on some lettuce to kind of resemble a salad. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> it's very, very fishy, which is probably the anchovies. Um, it's not terrible, but it would require some practice in eating it, I would say. Um, maybe less fish would help. I also got some regular green goddess dressing from my fridge just to do a little taste test to see how it changed from 1920s to now. Much better, definitely. Um, less fishy. A little bit more lemony. Definitely a better flavor. Um, thank you for watching this recipe of Green Goddess. So my group decided to do the Green Goddess dressing food way. And since I'm doing fermentation, it was pretty hard to figure out how fermentation was like particularly used um, in the Green Way, in the Green Goddess dressing, just because the Green Goddess dressing is a more modern idea that came from California from the Palace Hotel. So when to find like something that's been fermented, especially since it kind of like a mayonnaise, mayonnaise based food was kind of challenging. So my fermentation dish dates all the way back to about the 13th century, 13th century. And it's similar to one of the ancestor dishes that I just chose to do because it was mainly the one that had fermentation in it. Um, so this is a dressing from the 13th century and it's from the cookbook from Damascus. I think that's how you say it. And it's called Ketabal al -Ulsa. And then the dressing is called the Green South. And the main ingredients are pepper, garlic, vinegar, and parsley. And parsley is a big, um, I guess, green ingredient in the Green Goddess dressing food way that kind of our whole group had. Um, I was unable to find measurements, so I'm just kind of gonna wing it and figure out, just kind of do my own measurements for it. So normally I'm pretty sure they, and like how our ancestors would do it is they would have a bowl and then kind of use like a stone to kind of mash it up and mix it together, but I don't have those materials. So we're using a bowl and a spoon. So first I'm just taking white distilled vinegar. Ooh. And I'm just gonna start with like two teaspoons of that. I don't really know, maybe more. Maybe I'll start with like four. Fermentation um, kind of happens with like a salt acid reaction. And so the fermentation in this would be the vinegar and then fermentation helps preserve like the salad dressings and whatnot. So vinegar was found um, three around 300 BC and it was used first by the Egyptians and Babylonians and can date as far back as 500 BC. So that's where that one's from. Next, I'm gonna throw in some pepper and pepper is native to and it was traded on the Malbar Coast and known as black gold. 
it isn't a like luxury spice as we like talked about in class though so it wasn't very fancy the next one i'm going to be using is garlic and i'm just using minced garlic because that's what we have at the house so i pounded garlic into this um and garlic originated in the Aset, Aset Cyber, Siberia, and it was used by the Romans and then was introduced in South America to the Inca Indians and then was traded with the German miners in the 19th century. So now I'm just going to um, put in a generous amount of parsley. The only parsley they had was like minced parsley. So I'm just going to give that a generous amount because it's... The greenness of this dressing. Parsley was native to the Mediterranean lands and was used by the ancient Greeks and Romans. A form of the native parsley was said to have been domesticated in 1582 and introduced to Peru from Spain and to settlements in Virginia in 1612. So now I'm just kind of going to mix in like mortar as well as I can this together to kind of make it into I guess a green goddess looking dressing. So I've kind of pounded and tried to ground this together and I guess this is what it looks like. But basically, basically it was most likely served right away or stored in a sealed container such as mason jars to allow fermentation to like happen with the vinegar and the rest of the ingredients. But it also um, was served, the fermentation just allowed it so that it could be served to more people over like harsher seasons in the winter, like sailors and whatnot. Garlic. Oh, it's very garlicky. Ooh, yeah, <coughs> garlicky. Before you start cooking, um, we're gonna grab some cilantro. We're gonna bunch that all together. I learned this off a, a video on TikTok, I'm pretty sure. But rough chop, this is my rough chop. I'm not amazing with my knife skills, so bear with me. We're gonna throw that all into the container and where we're eventually gonna throw everything in and blend. In this bowl, we have our dill, we have our parsley, we have our green onion, and we have our basil. All the ingredients have been washed, so don't worry. Um, we're rocking with clean herbs. Uh, now we're gonna grab our parsley. Parsley is actually the ingredient and the herb that connects our, our food way together. Um, it is used in all of our dishes and it is what gives green goddess or green sauce its color. Go ahead and throw it in there with uh, cilantro. Now we're going to grab our green onions and we're going to repeat the process for um, what's rest of the vegetables slash herbs. Um, coming along together pretty nice. I'm not the biggest fan of dill. I don't like the smell, but this recipe called for, so here I am using it. Um, then we're gonna grab our basil, chop that up, rough chop, and throw it in with the rest of our ingredients. Now we're gonna go with two garlic cloves. I, I've i seen a lot of tricks on how to get the skin off, but I never do it. I always do it by hand, don't know why, but here's a little rough chop, and we're gonna throw that in as well along with the rest of our mixture. Now we're gonna go with some Chobani um, plain yogurt. And I think this is what makes it um, a little bit on the healthier side. Most of the recipes call for mayonnaise and it's most traditional ways with mayonnaise, but this is a healthy alternative. Then we're gonna go with some olive oil and kind of slowed that down so you can see. This is probably what gives it the texture. We're gonna go with salt and pepper to taste, as always. Go crazy or just add a little bit up to you. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw this on the blender and um, hope this consistency comes out well the first time and we don't have to add anything else to it. So I love the color of it. The color came out really nice, nice and green, green goddess. Um, the consistency looks pretty good and we're gonna go ahead and go for a taste test. I'm using a baby spoon, don't judge me. Uh, I thought it needed a little bit more salt and pepper, so went ahead and added some of that. Um, maybe I just like my thing salty, but I thought it needed more. We're gonna blend that up one more time, and now we're gonna go ahead and transfer it into a mason jar so we can put it in the fridge and then use it later. And I made a mess, I know, but that's just how I am, so bear with me. 
go ahead and seal it up and that's how you make green goddess now here um, I have some leftover sweet potato fries I wasn't really in the mood for a salad so I'm gonna try it with this um, gonna dip a little bit of the sweet potato in there and try it. I thought it was pretty good but someone thought otherwise you want some dude come here <laughs> green goddess dressing falls in the family of green sauce and green sauce has been around for quite a bit of time we date back to the middle ages possibly even the classical period in europe and in these countries that recreated this green sauce um, it'd be safe to argue that it, it was seen as an elite food uh, and I say this because of the ingredients, um, the fresh herbs, and also because of the use. Uh, in many of these countries, it was used as a condiment or a dipping sauce for poultry, a, a fish, or um, bread, as seen in Italy. And we fast forward to the mid-1920s here in the U.S. Uh, at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, where a green sauce-inspired dressing um, was recreated. Uh, and named Green Green Goddess after a play that was going on there. And from then on, the popularity of the dressing skyrocketed um, for years to come. It was mass, mass, massively reproduced. And, um, and so the popularity of it and the accessibility of it kind of changed and the sociality of it changed. I would argue that the people who are going to be following this recipe or recreating this recipe are those who, A, have the money to buy the fresh ingredients, um, second, have the time, to recreate this recipe uh, and make it freshly. And third, you know, have the priority of their health, which um, in most cases, people who are making ends meet, probably, you know, their first priority probably isn't their health. They probably won't go out and buy these ingredients, these uh, expensive, somewhat expensive ingredients. And second, they most likely, and this one's probably the, the key, they don't have the time to, to recreate this. They will probably find some sort of alternative. And so this recipe or dish specifically takes us back to this view of an elite food that is probably more attainable to those who are well off economically or in a better spot economically. And um, sort of like how we sit, we saw with the original green sauce in Europe.